Scott from the old curiosity shop and I'm back with another small kitchen counter thrift haul thank you for tuning back in some of these things you saw me thrift uh, either yesterday or the day before so I'll go very quickly over those uh, and I'll tell you what's for sale and what I'm going to hold on to first of all this nice Cinderella bowl cleaned up very nicely remember how fussy I was in my car because it had stuff all over it well it cleaned up beautifully and it's the 443 uh, Pyrex Butterprint Cinderella Bowl in really excellent condition. So if you're in need of one of these, uh, it's super clean and shiny with very little wear on the inside. Beautiful luster to it. I'm really happy with the way that cleaned up. That's a pattern that's still doing very well on the internet. So you saw me thrift that yesterday. This I picked up recently. It's a copper kettle. I looked all over it for a name, hope, hoping to find Revere Ware, uh, or that it was one of those English whistling teapots. I couldn't find any mark on it at all, and uh, I really looked carefully. But there's quite a bit of use on the bottom, and sometimes those marks are hard to find. So there could be something hiding on there somewhere, but we're just going to say maker unknown. I'm not certain of its age. Sometimes these things were made many years ago. Sometimes they were made last week in India. Uh, but this has a really nice old finish to it on the copper and on the brass handle. This is wood up here and uh, it just has a really nice decorative look to it and you can see it uh, has been used and well loved. There are no dents in it and I suppose it could be used if you wanted to or it would look really nice as a piece of kitchen decor. All right so that is currently listed in the old curiosity shop as well as the butter print bowl. I'm stumped on this I knew that it was old when I found it, uh, but I'm not sure of its origin. Interestingly enough, this is a piece of blue opaline glass. This is, a, this is not plastic. It's called blue opaline glass, and it, the original uh, little piece of reed that was holding it on uh, broke. So I just used a piece of white ribbon to put it back on. That might not appeal to you, so you could change that out if you wanted. But a nice opaline uh, glass handle. And uh, I, didn't, I didn't try to clean this at all. It doesn't have any funny smell, and it's not uh, sticky or oily or anything like that. But you do see there's that old dust that's down in there that just takes years and years of sitting around. This might have been a souvenir piece that someone brought back from uh, a trip. And on the inside there's some writing that sort of looks Arabic in a sense, but I'm no expert so I couldn't tell you. Well, okay, there's the ribbon I used to uh, put the handle back on. That's what was holding on the blue opaline glass. So that, that looks a lot better than my ribbon, but just for authenticity, 
this little piece of old string is what uh, was pretty much dry rotted and broke. Uh, I cannot figure out what that is and someone's going to know when we look on the inside is that some type of Arabic, Arabic script? Uh, I suppose it could be. That really, that character there sort of does look like it. So uh, I didn't really go any farther than to say I'm not really sure what that is and I'm guessing that it, that is, at first I thought I was reading Japan there but again once I saw this I realized that we're talking about something else. So you get this in case you want it and uh, put the put the lid back on. So uh, just to, and the basket is in really good condition. I guess you were able to see that. Would make a nice little sewing basket, I guess, or something decorative. That's also in the uh, in the shop right now as well. And here's a cute little dresser tray that uh, might even date to pre-1920s. This might be a little bit older than that, although it still could be 20s. We see a little damage here around the end. This fine work here is really coming off just a little bit. That's, that's glass there. And then underneath it looks like a piece of silk and uh, some uh, silk flowers. I don't know how well you can see that. And then the, the base of it is just cardboard. So it, it wasn't terribly expensive when it was new, but it is attractive and it is clean and it is in nice con very nice condition considering it does have uh, some damage from use. It's still pretty and would look really nice on a vintage dresser. And then two nice little 1940s kitchen pieces. This one here has got the greater greater top on it. Now I'm not going to be able to get that off. Uh, yes I am. Okay. So there's the top that comes off and then you, I guess you could put cheese in here or you could even put, uh, I'm not sure why you would put walnuts in here and then turn this upside down and grate them as they come out. But I guess it's probably meant for cheese and you just are able to uh, grate the cheese as you're dumping it out. What uh, your grandmother had one of these, so what did she use it for? What am I not thinking of? And then this lid goes back on top. I've seen the nut grinders where there's a, a tin, a square tin reservoir on top where you just dump the nuts in and you, you grind them and they fall down in, but you obviously couldn't put any nuts on top of this. Whatever you dispense out of this has to already be on the inside. So what would it be beside besides cheese I don't know and then here again probably from the 1940s we saw a lot of red in kitchens in the 40s uh, this one is marked hazel atlas on the bottom a little mustard pot you could do relish as well but it's probably was meant for mustard and what I you'll see the hazel atlas mark on the bottom and what's wonderful is that's the original spoon and that little spoon has been kicking around inside of that jar for 80 years, not quite 80, maybe 70, excuse me, about 75 years or so. So it's plastic and there's a little bit of wear on it as you can see. The lid is plastic and early plastic, but and it's got some writing on the inside. But it's in good condition and real cute for your vintage kitchen. Now get back in there. All right. I would put horseradish in it. All right. These things over here you saw, that's the Imperial Glass Carnival salt and pepper shakers. Not the Carnival Glass from 1910 to 1920, but the Carnival Glass from 1960. These do still have a pretty good value between $30 to $60. They are in excellent condition, I'm happy to say. I wasn't sure what they would look like when I got them out of the bag. But they're really good. There's the IG that stands for Imperial Glass. You won't see that on antique carnival glass. Okay, so in the sort of a grape and cable uh, pattern. And I'm not sure whether you saw this or not, but it's a uh, another one of the black glass vases. And it's got some silver decoration as well. We have flowers on the front. A little bit of wear, 
but no chips or cracks on that in excellent condition. And you've heard me talk about black glass. It really became a fad in the very late 20s and remained popular through the 1930s. And even though we think of L.E. Smith as being probably the largest producer of black glass, and they probably were, uh, everybody made uh, something out of black glass because there was money to be made. So all of the other elegant uh, glass companies made items of black glass as well. And it's usually unmarked, and of course that one is. Uh, and you know, when we really hold it up to the light, it's purple. And then I know some of you are teapot collectors, so I am. Uh, so I did go ahead and buy both of these teapots. Let's bring these up front. And I don't think you've seen either one of these, but they're also for sale right now in the old curiosity shop. This one is made by the Porcelier Company. Lots of folks collect Porcelier. They made light fixtures uh, for the bathroom, the kitchen, and all over the house. Some beautiful ones. They made creams and sugars. They made porcelain pieces for electric toasters and waffle irons, and they made percolators. Uh, just about anything that they could out of porcelain. It's good stuff. It is not cracked. In other words, the, there's no crazy in this glaze, and we have raised uh, flowers here that are all colored in. And it's in an Art Deco style. We see that from the geometric designs on the handle. A little bit of gold highlight there. And I like it from this direction as well. Uh, hole in the lid to let the steam out. Nice heavy lid. It is clean on the inside. There are no chips. I always, uh, if you're going to find chips, they're going to be right there. And that one is chip free. Uh, no chips on that. And we can see the porcelain mark right here. It's very heavy and in excellent condition. And this would date probably from the 19, 1940, late 30s to the 1940s. Very nice soft glaze, sort of an antique ivory color on this. So that's a pretty one. This one is uh, also nice, dates from the same era. It has more of a yellowish, although you probably can't see that. Uh, almost a, an ivory colored glaze in really good condition. No chips or cracks on this, no damage at all. And again, this one would date from the late 30s into the 40s, and it too is in an Art Deco style with a really pretty uh, sort of an orange daisy pattern on the front. Nice and heavy. Very nice lid, again, with a hole for the steam. And uh, we have some directions on the inside, which I don't know whether you'll be able to see that or not. You see the printing down there on the inside? Right there? It actually says, for piping hot coffee, preheat with hot water. Do not preheat over open flame. But you're supposed to pour hot water in this and get your coffee pot nice and hot before you pour your hot coffee into it. And that helps keep your coffee warm. This is a Dripolator. Superior quality kitchenware, Dripolator. The Enterprise Aluminum Company. Aluminum? I don't see any aluminum. Well, that's because we're missing something. And a lot of you know that there is an aluminum piece that sits on the top that's actually a dripolator. It's just an aluminum ha uh, case. I have one somewhere, but it's hiding in the back of one of these kitchen cabinets. You'll often find these pots without their aluminum dripolator because they would get separated. You can find them. You can pick one up on the internet for 10 or 15 bucks. Uh, if you actually want to make dripped coffee in, into this pot, otherwise you're just going to be buying this pot and using it uh, as it is for a serving, as a serving pot. Okay, and then the Faultsgraf uh, vase pot, decorative vase back here that I found. Uh, this dates to the 1930s, and it is in absolutely excellent condition. And I was amazed to find it in my local Goodwill. And if we look at the bottom, we can see it says York P for York Pottery, 
And what's that funny looking symbol that it's in? Well, that's a keystone. Why is it in a keystone? Because Pennsylvania is the keystone state. Actually, it's the keystone commonwealth. But that's why they used a keystone there. And uh, that's the mark that Falzgraf was using in the 1930s. Uh, it's sad that Falzgraf is out of business. They started around 1811 and they ran until about 2008. They were one of America's oldest family-run businesses. We know them today, of course, from all their dinnerware, Yorktown and, uh, oh, fudge, what are the other names? Uh, all those other uh, pieces of dinnerware. But back in the 1800s, they were making utilitarian pieces, and then they made some decorative pieces like this in the 30s. So this, I'm keeping. I love the 30s, and I love green, and I can't part with that. But everything else that you see here on the kitchen counter is uh, currently for sale in the old curiosity shop. Okay, now I told you this was going to be a short one, so we're going to wrap it up right there, and I want to say I hope everyone is having a wonderful day and a, a fantastic weekend. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Scott from the old curiosity shop saying thanks for watching, and so long for now.